Hello, everybody. This is Robert Ott, the Vice Chairman for the Washington State Business Enterprise Program Committee. And six feet to my right is our Chairman, Mr. Bob Miller, and we'd like to share some information with you and uh, hope to let all of you know that we are there for you through thick and thin, and we will turn the page. Mr. Bob Miller, sir. Thank you, Robert, uh, and, and welcome. Uh, vendors, Robert and I uh, got together and discussed some options about reaching out to all the vendors as we work through this very difficult, challenging, uh, and um, certainly unexpected times. I um, want to just let you all know that, that we all are experiencing uh, a lot of trouble, a lot of, uh, a lot of financial issues, uh, staffing issues inventory problems, and the list goes on and on. So, uh, like I said, we wanted to reach out and um, just let you, let, just answer maybe some questions, let you hear a, a, a familiar voice and, and let you know that, 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 that there is some assistance and some, uh, some, some options for you. Um, we have a couple of topics of discussion we'd like to include in, in this uh, email. The first one would be leadership. Uh, at the last Allstate conference, we had a, a long discussion about leadership with one of the trainers. Um, and in these very challenging times, I feel as though leadership uh, is, is it's very significant for each and every one of, of us vendors. Uh, not only for each other, um, so you certainly can reach out if you're feeling uh, despair uh, or, or you have questions, uh, anything, whatever it takes, reach out to any one of the committee members or uh, the agency staff or some, some friendly, f familiar voices such as Jim Sutherland's available as well. Um, but in a situation where we're talking about leadership, we want to um, make sure that we're available uh, even though you may feel as though your world around you is crumbling, uh, you still need to remain strong for your staff. Uh, their world, in addition, is, is, is unclear, it's unsure. Uh, the things that they're experiencing are, um, are real as well. So I'd like to share some of the things that I'm involved in or I'm uh, participating with, with my staff uh, um, reaching out to them, communicating with them either by text or by phone calls, uh, ensuring that the, their unemployment has been uh, um, uh, uh, accepted and that they're receiving those checks, uh, making sure that the paperwork that comes from Employment Security is, is filled out properly, accurately, and return Employment Security right away so that, that there's uh, limited downtime for, for, for their, uh, their unemployment support. Um, we don't have a lot of the uh, information yet with regard to the federal government's unemployment, but it's my understanding that they could earn an additional $600 per week uh, on the, the, from the federal side on top of their uh, state unemployment. Um, Beyond that, it's just a matter of communicating, making sure that they're in a good place, making sure that they're safe, that they're participating in the, in the, in the social distancing and um, ensuring and, and, and letting them know that their, 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 their job is, is, is gonna be safe for them and that uh, we're gonna reopen, we're gonna reopen strong. So just a few ideas. And if you have any additional ideas with regard to leadership and support, you know, feel free to share those. So now Robert's going to spend a few minutes speaking on uh, behalf of some of the stimulus packages that are available. Uh, hopefully that you've had an opportunity to get into it, but Robert can add a little more clarity to some of that. Thanks, Bob. Well, my friends, it is, I will say this, it seems like every day something changes or adjusts. So we definitely got to keep on top of what's happening, go to the websites that are needed, reach out, because things are constantly changes. This is new for everybody. Uh, this is not something we have experience in. In any case, number one, which is really important, 
is your bank that your business uses, and number two, your accountant. Those two are very, very important tools that will assist you um, in, in being able to uh, utilize the assistance that the government is going to be providing. With that being said, we have a few things. This week coming up, we are going to be most likely looking at receiving the money into our personal checking accounts. I believe a single person is $1,200, and depending on the size of your family following that, it, it goes up. Along with that $1,200 check, you also have other types of programs that can assist you with one being unemployment. From my experience so far in talking with everybody and interacting and communicating, it is standard that when you do this in the beginning of unemployment, you will get denied. However, it will move forward to the federal and there's a very good chance that you'll be able to get accepted as a small business owner and be receiving $600 a week for a period of time. The length of that time is still a question mark. We've heard everything from three months to four months, so it's not quite clear at this point in time. The next type of program they have works with the Small Business Administration. I happen now with my cafe and the bank we have, I happen to have a line of credit with the Small Business Administration already. However, in what has happened, they are willing to provide $10,000 to assist your business in getting back up on its feet if it applies towards inventory, utility bills, rent, etc. And if everything is done correctly, there's a very good chance that $10,000 will be wiped clean and you will not owe that money. And that is a beautiful thing only here in America. Following that, the Small Business Administration is willing to assist you in borrowing money. With that being said, the interest rates will be much less than normal times, and the length in paying it back, case to case, could be longer than other options were prior to this all happening. So that is a wonderful opportunity, and once again, your accountant and your bank are going to be the key things to assist you in progressing forward with that. The third part is being able to have your employees paid for. I will say this, the uh, concept is very good. I heard out of all the different programs, that one itself is an awful lot of paperwork. With that being the case, we, you still have your accountant and you still have your bank and your other means of assistance that you have is through us and the Business Enterprise Program. We have already communicated with Jim Sutherland and he is prepared to assist any of the blind vendors in getting this paperwork filled out and completed and put in the right direction for us to utilize the services that are out there. So, it is gonna be up to us. It will not come out of the sky and land on our lap. We have to go get it. But, we are business owners and that's who we are. Nothing ever came to us before. We work for what we want and that's the pride we have in who we are. So it's good, it's out there, and that's why you need to pick up that phone, get on the internet and do what is needed to get the assistance. With that being said, we're gonna now move on to our next subject. Mr. Bob Miller will take over from here. Actually, Robert, before we, before we continue here, there's a few things that I would like to add on to this subject. Uh, I'd like to just share the experience that I had as I've ap applied for some of these opportunities. First of all, I did apply for the self-employed un unemployment, which uh, at, with the state of Washington, I was denied. Uh, they sent uh, a response, I think it came by email, uh, and it sounded as though it was dead in the water. So <clears throat> I'm gonna continue to pursue that, and as if, if I get more information, I'll, I'll make sure that gets out. In addition, I applied for the uh, the Small Business Administration loan up to $10,000, which may be forgiven, as Robert indicated, rent, uh, inventory, utilities, etc. Uh, I have I, I applied for that. The, the form was actually 
fairly easy to fill out and the small business registration website in any case it takes about two hours to ten minutes if you have the proper paperwork ready to go it really only takes about 30 to 45 minutes <clears throat> and then I uh, like I said I haven't heard from back on that one yet but I'll, I'll let you know and then um, <clears throat> the, the last thing I like to add to this subject is it's my understanding this has not been confirmed yet so be a little careful on this but the estimated taxes for 2020's tax return, uh, the estimated taxes that are due April 15th, June 15th, and September 15th are all going to be deferred, not excused, but deferred until October 15th. So be a little careful because they will need to be paid uh, in October, but if you need so yeah, if you need some assistance on that or you need to be able to defer that, uh, those payments a little bit, you can do that. So uh, keep that in mind. Try and, try and remain as current as you can. And then uh, that could be another, another subject for you. Robert, anything else on this subject? No, I think uh, what we might want to go on for now is um, one of the things, Bob, I think it'd be good we should discuss now is uh, the steps that are going to be put in place and we start to reopen back again and uh, all those proper things and, and, and that could flow right into some of the changes that are going to be taking place. Things are not going to be the same. Things are going to be different. And so I think maybe we should flow into that now, Bob. Okay. Yeah. So it's now that you're at home, uh, you have some downtime. I think it's important that you spend some of your, your spare time to start thinking about some of the uh, changes that, that the food service industry is going to need to adapt adapt to. So let's talk about catering, for example. Uh, if you're doing any catering at all right now, you're probably in a situation where that is just cold stopped. Uh, that's my experience. Uh, yeah, it's, it's in the catering business right now, it's just terrible. What I'm thinking about is a expanded box lunch menu. Uh, my experience in the past is most of our customers prefer not to do box lunches, but I don't think they're going to have any choice now. Uh, we have some minimums in place. Uh, some of the hot food meals are minimums of 20. Some of the barbecue meals are minimums of 30 and even 100. Uh, so I think that those minimums are going to need to be dramatically reduced. If we have weddings, for example, scheduled in July and August, if they even have them, uh, I think that the, if, if a wedding has 150 guests, we might expect maybe 75 or 50. So minimums are going to be a, a critical issue. Um, Pre-packaged items within your catering, uh, like chips versus maybe some salads or... Just, just pre-packaged items, pre-wrapped cookies or desserts or something like that. Uh, drinks that you might want to lean towards the, the, the uh, pre-bottled and, and canned drinks versus the dispenser style drinks. Uh, coffee, I haven't really thought too much about the coffee service, um, but that's going to need to get addressed because that could, that could be some issues for a little while. Um, so uh, some additional changes might include the accessibility of the hand sanitizer, whether it's at the cashier's stand or perhaps at the salad bar where you have people handling tongs all the time. Salad bar might be something that might be might need to go away for a little while and in, in, in a replacement using uh, pre-packaged, uh, pre-made salads. So uh, that being said, your grab and go um, presence is probably going to need to be dramatically improved um, as you can offer uh, prepackaged items where uh, your customers don't have to um, use, use, use hands, tongs, or, or other, other things. So a couple other things might, might be uh, the use of or, or, um, your menu items geared towards takeout. So think about things that work better for takeout rather than dine in. You can experience, I think, some takeout more importantly over the course of the next few months. And another thing might be for either in-house or maybe even for your catering, your caterings, uh, the individual prepackaged 
like a Clorox uh, hand wipe, hand sanitizer or hand wipe. You, know, you might need to have those available at the beginning of your buffet or maybe at the end of your buffet, whichever. But those are some of the things that you want to start thinking about uh, using your, if you, if you have an opportunity to get on the, on the, onto the, uh, the internet, check out what some of the other uh, caterers and, and restaurants are doing to, to be ad adapting to the changes. Uh, Robert, would you like to add anything to, to this? You know, yeah, Bob, I think that uh, one of the things, uh, every situation is de dealing. Right now here in Washington State, our program, I believe 98% of our locations are closed down right now. And it just has to do with the government facility that surrounds it and how it's set up. Um, I happen to be one of the couple that's still open. I'm operating it with a very, very minimal uh, menu and coffee. And um, I'm operating with one person. With, with saying that, though, one of the reasons why we're able to financially do that is because I do Uber Eats. Uh, my cafe does Uber Eats, and uh, we do Grubhub. Um, I recommend that if you have a location where an individual can get to the back of your kitchen to pick up and drive and deliver, it's something you should look into because that is what's happening with society. It is convenience, and even though it costs a little more, people pay for convenience. With what is happening right now, it's going to go from not just convenience and money, it's just going to go for safety and security and comfort. So our Uber Eats and Grubhub have actually been very busy since all this has happened because you cannot go into a restaurant right now. So we have been busy uh, much more than usual. But it's, it, it is another opportunity, something to think about depending on which location you have and if a driver could be able to get to the back of the kitchen get in and get out smoothly. So that just depends there. But that is things you need to look at because that's what's happening in the changes that are, that are, it's, that are, it's going to be different. There's no doubt about it. So keep that in mind. Okay. For our uh, final subject, Robert is going to talk a little bit about communication kind of as it pertains to not only the staff, the team, as well as the customers and maybe some of the changes and adaptations that we need to participate in. Robert. All right, sir. So here's some of the things I think you should take notes on. Number one, we will be opening up again. When? We're not sure, but we will. With that being the case, I believe you need to set up for an employee meeting. Uh, that's at least an hour in time to discuss some of the changes and things and notes and topics. And part of that discussion you're going to have to get into with your staff is to understand things are not the same anymore. It, the, the eyes of the customers will be uh, looking and seeing how we're handling things with sanitation, um, how we're handling things uh, from point A to point B, where the hands being washed, the coughing, any of these things. It, it has been the most important thing always. And now, after what has happened, it's a whole new level. So it's going to be really important to sit down and have an employee meeting to discuss all these things with your staff. Um, and that's important. There are some locations that may be a piece of plexiglass in front of the cash register between the two of you, the customer and the cashier. Maybe uh, that is a good idea. It's case to case, but look at it. Be open about the whole thing. Make sure your everything is packaged. Uh, you know, the sanitation is a standard. Be proud of it too. Let the staff and employees know that you're proud of how you're handling this. It is gonna be a standard now adjacent to the cash register, near different serving areas where the condiments are, where there's going to be little pumps or little baskets with packages in them of uh, sanitation wipes. Um, it's just going to be a standard now uh, from here on out. That is what they're going to count on uh, in knowing that it's being done that way. And it's going to be an extra cost, but that is just what needs to be done. And that's what's going to be expected um, in the food service business, us continuing on this. Along with all of that, um, you want to get a newsletter out to your customers on your website and showing the positive changes and showing uh, the quotes and the words to the people of how we are looking forward to um, uh, moving ahead and uh, doing the proper things in order for everybody to be comfortable in coming to uh, enjoy our food services here at our location. It's going to be important to share that with the customers and to build that comfort. 
So a newsletter, the website, a meeting with the employees, these little things are gonna have a lot to do with your steps in opening back up again. Any thoughts to add to that, Bob? No, I think that's, that's good. So I'm just gonna wrap up. Um, Robert and I here again, Robert and I decided that, that we just needed to reach out. We felt the need. This is not a committee-oriented function. Uh, we, uh, we thought that it was important that you hear a familiar voice. Um, we just want to encourage everybody to be strong, to, uh, to just, of course, stay, stay healthy. Um, if you find some value in this discussion, you know, please reach out to, to me or Robert or any other committee members or, or vendors, staff, that's fine. Um, we think that we're going to do this again in, in a, a week or two. Uh, as more subject and more information becomes uh, available. And uh, if, you, if you're feeling uh, in, in the need, to need to, uh, to, that you need to talk, uh, you have some serious concerns that maybe we didn't address here, you, you're welcome to call me. My home number is 360-705-2816. Uh, and I'm available quite a bit because we are closed down. Uh, Robert, would you like to make yourself available? Or? Sure, absolutely. My mobile number is 360-888-0474. And of course, my email address is robert at Bobby J's, which is spelled B-O-B-B-Y-J-A-Y-Z dot com. Robert at Bobby J's dot com. All lowercase, no space. Feel free. If there's anything I can do to assist, it would be nothing but a pleasure. We are a team, so we need to keep our heads up high to get ourselves through this. Back each other up.